Welcome to the third episode of our video series where we are reviewing this year's 2024 WIC English Language Paper 1. Now, in this video, we shall be considering the third section of the paper which covers question 21 to question 30. And this section usually comes with an instruction for students to pick out an option that best interprets the given idiom. Now, before we begin, let's talk about what you must understand basically, that is, before approaching questions on this section. And we can say there are just about three things or three steps that you can take. Number one, try to select an option or rather to eliminate an option that, that looks like an ordinary interpretation. The reason is that idioms are coded words. In other words, they are not, their meanings are not embedded in the words that are given in the context. That's step one. Then the se second step to take is to look through the options again and eliminate an option that looks like an opposite of the context. That is, an option that looks like a negation of what is presented in the context, that is, in the question. So you strike off that option again. By taking that step, you would have successfully or possibly eliminated one or two out, or out of the four given options and probably left with two. If that is the case, then you cannot proceed with the third method, which is to use context clue. So you now use context clue with two or three options that you are going to be left with. So these are the three uh, basic steps that you can quickly apply to solving problems on idioms. Now let's get started. Question 21. Ojo was cautioned not to juggle the old man's nerve. This means that Ojo was cautioned not to A. Harass the old man B. Annoy the old man C. Disturb the old man D. Tease the old man The correct answer to this question is option A. Harass the old man Now, if you go by the three steps that I explained at the beginning of this video Eliminate an option that looks like an ordinary or a casual interpretation of the idiom and such option is going to be D, tease the old man. So, if you look at this idiom, if I with the sound of the word jago, you know, it has to do with something that is if you use on a nomatopia, that is a figure of speech that relates sounds to meaning, then you would understand that tease the old man is a light word compared to jago. And then, when you're not left, you can strike that off, then you're not left with A, B, or C. Then option C, disturb the old man. Jago the old man's nerve. The idiom is Jago the old man's nerve. So to get on someone's nerve uh, typically sounds like getting the person offended or upset. However, annoying the old man is lighter than harassing the old man. Therefore, the correct answer to this question is option A. Question 22. Amina was completely swept off her feet the first time she met Gabriel. This means that she fell deeply in love. B. Was pleasantly surprised. C. Trusted him completely. D. Became utterly confused. The correct answer to this question is fell deeply in love. Now, if you go by what I explained at the beginning of this video, then you can easily strike off option B and C. The context says Amina was completely swept off her feet. If you look at swept off the feet, although we're not going to go by the surface meaning of the word, it doesn't have to do with something pleasant. So was pleasantly surprised with go and trusted him completely would go as well. Of course, the meaning of the idiom for someone to be swept off her feet is to fall deeply in love. So option A is the correct answer. Then we look at question 23. His response showed that he kept abreast of events in the country. This means that he was A, mindful of events, B, involved in events, C, well informed about events, and D, curious about events. 
The correct answer to this question is option C, well informed about events. Now, when you go by what I explained at the beginning of this video, you would discover that involved in events and curious about events are casual interpretation of the context. So, the option that could make sense to us should be A or C. The first one, or A, rather says might for event. For, to, to keep something abreast means to keep something close, especially something that has to do with ideas or thoughts. So the meaning of keeping abreast with something is to become well informed about events or ideas or thoughts. So option C is the correct answer. Question 24. Our school is the last but one on the road. This means that our school is A, the very last building, B, one of the last buildings, C, the one after the last, D, the one before the last. The correct answer to this question is option D, the one before the last. Please take a good note of this idiom, the idiom in this question, which is last but one on the road, the last but one. So what we're talking about here is the last but one. This is an idiomatic expression, which means second to the last, the one before the last. So it is a way that British people talk about something that comes before the very last. But if you look at the options again, critically, going by our principle, you would understand that the one after the last. If we have the last, then do we have to have another one after the last? So you can see that that option can just go away from there. Of course, the correct answer, like I said, that interprets the last but one on the road, or the last but one means the one before the last. Number 25. The new shopping plaza is very easy on the eye. This means that the shopping plaza is A. Grandiose, B. Cool, C. Attractive, D. Expensive. The correct answer to this question is attractive. Now, when you look at the options very closely and it's going by our or rules or principles, we can easily eliminate option B. If we say easy on the eye, cool is going to be a casual interpretation or surface interpretation of the ways or terms of the idiom, easy on the eye. Now, when you now come to the remaining options, we have something like uh, grandiose, and then we have uh, attractive and expensive. If something is, is expensive, then it's not going to be cool or it's not going to be easy on the eye. So you can see option D would go. Then C and D, or rather A and C, are technically very close to the meaning of this idiom. For something to be gradual means for it to be overly large, that is larger than normal, and attractive anyway. Essentially, it applies to buildings or edifice. Now, if you look at the way the expression goes, attractive, is going to be the better option, not grandiose. Grandiose is, in some dictionary, they marked it as disapproval. That is, when they use the word grandiose, they are satirizing or kind of uh, insinuating, trying to tell you that something is good, but they are not actually pleased about it. For so, so something to be easy on the app means it is attractive. Now, question 26. The nonchalant attitude of Jonah really gets my goat. This means that Jonah's attitude, A, baffles me, B, irritates me, C, amazes me, D, amuses me. The correct answer to this question is irritates me. Now, the idiom here is gets my goat, gets my goat. This idiom means gets me angry or gets me annoyed. So, this is the correct answer to question 26. Then, number 27. A good friend is supposed to be with you through thick and thin. This means that a good friend should A. Be prepared for any eventuality, B. Stand by you in good and bad times, and then C. Accompany you anywhere you go, and D. Always advise you. Now, the correct answer to this question is stand by you in good and bad times, in thick and thin. If you look at it contextually, that is structural, talking about English structure, you would discover that this expression captures the conjunctions that are used and the prepositions that are used in the idiom. 
stand by you in good, meaning thick and thin, bad times? So the correct answer is option B. Now you go to question 28. Willie has been under the weather for some days. This means that Willie has been sad, B, ill, C, in the rain, D, outside the country. The correct answer to this question is option B. To be under the rain means for someone to be unwell or to be ill. Now, when you look at to be in the rain, it's a casual interpretation, of course. You can go by our principles and strike that off. To be outside the country looks like a stark contrast or something that negates the context of the idiom. So, the correct answer to this question is option B. Now, question 29. I am was beaten at his own game. This means that tire strategy were leaked B. This means that tire missed the target. C. Tyre forget his own tactics. D. Tyre's method were used to defeat him. The correct answer is option D. If you say that someone was beaten at his own game, then it means that the person was defeated with his own strategies or plans. Now, question 30. We never believed that father would pull through that fever. This means that we did not believe that he would A, recover from the sickness, B, acquire immunity to the fever, C, die from the sickness, and D, suffer so long. Yes, I must mention this. Now, the word in the idiom must not be repeated in the option. So, and then it looks like, again, a negation of the idiom outright. Now, the correct answer to this question is recover from the sickness. So, this is how we come to the end of this episode, the third episode in our series, where we are considering this year's 2024 World English Language Examination, Paper 1. Can you join me in the next video, where we shall be examining the fourth section that has to do with synonyms. Mm -hmm.